Good afternoon. My name is Samyak Chakrabarti, and I am the president of the United Nations Young Changemakers Conclave and the founder and managing director of Expillion Skills Lab. First, I hope that each one of you is safe, in good health, and are following COVID protocols. I am informed that many of you are watching this in colleges, in your auditoriums. Uh, I hope uh, you are following social distancing protocols. It is indeed an absolute honor and privilege to be connected to all of you on a subject that is so deeply personal to me and to my entire team. And that is of how to enhance your employability in the new world of work. What does that really mean? Usually, we are told, go to school, get good marks, that will get you into a good college. Do well in college, and you have a job waiting for you. But that equation has now changed. Employers across the board are now saying, just degrees aren't enough. Just technical skills aren't enough. We need candidates who are able to apply their own mind outside of their technical competence. What does that again mean? Today, whether you're a coder, product developer, engineer, you will also have to communicate, collaborate, create, and solve outside of your technical competence. It is the age of smart generalists, that is graduates who are able to apply transferable skills like critical thinking, problem solving, collaboration, storytelling, negotiation, emotional intelligence to deliver outcomes at work. Now, why is that? Why is your natural intelligence the most important professional asset in the age of artificial intelligence? For the following reasons. One, in the not so distant future, all or most road tasks or linear tasks will be automated. Or people who can just do that will not enjoy as much professional value as those who can now operate, create, think, and solve in uncertainty, in dynamic environments, ones that you've not been trained about. Those who can tackle successfully scenarios, opportunities, using their own creative, critical, and emotional intelligence are the ones who will succeed. And this dialogue is about opening your minds to what are the other skills that you need to be trained in, that you need to be proficient in, over and above, like I said, your technical competence in order to achieve success and growth. Because friends, there is one hard fact, one very, very hard fact. For every one job today, there are 250 plus applicants. And the one who is chosen is the one who has been able to display differentiators. And those differentiators, the ones that the world of work values are the 21st century workplace skills that I just stated. Don't take my word for it. In the next one hour or so, we have lined up five of the world of technology's most illustrious speakers and thinkers and leaders who are going to tell you why 21st century workplace skills are superpowers for your success and growth in the new world of work. I am delighted to be joined with, I'm delighted to be joined by Mr. T. V. Mohandas Pai, one of the core members of the Infosys team that built it into one of the world's largest IT conglomerates. And now is the founder of Aryan Capital, through which he is enabling hundreds of young entrepreneurs to build enterprises that are going to disrupt India's business landscape. Mr. Mohandas Pai, we're deeply honored and grateful 
that you took out time to address thousands of students across the country and give them a direction, give them a new vision for their career. Mr. Mohan Das Pai. Folks, thank you very much for inviting me to give you this talk. It's an interesting subject. I would like to start by talking about what are the skills that we need to succeed globally and in life? Because we are coming to the era of artificial intelligence, machine learning, robotics, where a lot of the work that people normally do will be automated or be done by machines. It's been happening for some time, but with the growth of IT and huge capacity through the cloud, very low cost and automation, computer vision, AI, machine learning, et cetera, machines are getting trained to do 60% of the work human beings do. So in order to succeed later in life, what is it that we need? The most important skill you need, in my view, is to retain your sense of curiosity. Because when you see a small child, a child learns because the child is curious. Child asks a lot of questions, looks at everything with fresh eyes, and these are fresh eyes, and then wonders about it, asks questions, and all that is stored into their hard disk. And a child retains this curiosity till it goes to school, and in the school, you are regimented and put into a different framework. And some of them lose curiosity and lose the interest. So you have to retain your curiosity all your life to understand and to learn because you need to have lifelong learning. The second important thing is you must learn to have a problem-solving attitude. <laughs> understand that there are a lot of challenges that you're going to face. How do you solve them? And this is a very big skill. A problem-solving attitude will come when you're curious, you understand and identify challenges, look at the data for coming to a conclusion as to what to do, and based upon the analysis and data, you choose the right solution, which is very logical to you to succeed. And it must be done instantaneously in your mind. So you need to develop a problem-solving attitude and have the ability. Then third, you need to understand technology because technology is underpinning everything that we do in our life. And I think it's a very important skill that you must have. I don't mean you must learn how to make technology, but be users of technology because there's so many apps today, so many things that are available to everybody to do. And if you're able to do that in a big way, you will succeed because they are enhancing your productivity, enhancing your skills and making you do things faster and making your life better. So I think it's an important thing that you must understand, be users of technology. And then develop your soft skills. <clears throat> because soft skills are extremely important because as human beings, we are social creatures. And being social creatures, we express ourselves and we learn to communicate with people. Expressing ourselves and learning to communicate is very important because we need to live together. We are a social group and we have to socialize and we have to express ourselves. And the way you express ourselves, yourself is extremely important. So you must learn how to communicate, how to be articulate, how to express yourself in a manner that the other person understands better. Expressing yourself is not to show your intelligence or your language or your ability to communicate. Expressing yourself is to demonstrate that whatever message you're conveying is understood by the person to whom you're conveying the message. And I think that's the principle that you must keep in mind. So talking, debating, expressing yourself is important. Along with that, your body language. Your body language should be positive. When you walk into a room, you must bring some gravitas along with you. Gravitas means presence. When you walk into a room, do people look at you? And what do they see? Do they see a very secure, confident individual? You will see a very nervous individual who is very shy. Do you see a beaten person or do they see a very optimistic person? And being optimistic doesn't mean you are aggressive because some people may not like aggression. But it does not mean that you do not demonstrate passion and you do not demonstrate high energy. Passion, high energy are required. Body language is required. Expression is required. Communication is required. And these are small, these are all soft skills that you must learn. And then along with small skills, soft skills like this, you must learn how to communicate in writing. How do you write? How do you 
because when you express yourself, it can be vocal, like speaking. It can be by the way you react, uh, and that shows body language. It can also be the way you write things to express yourself. Your writing should be crisp, clear, to the point, without wandering all over the place, and very logical, point to point. So that anybody who reads anything that you send to them, and people still read, people still read. It's not that with technology, you know, you can use short form language and do things because that is uh, something that young people do. But nevertheless, you must learn to write properly and be very crisp and be very logical so that people understand what you're writing so that you write about what you want to express and uh, what you want to convey to people. And that is a very, very important part of developing your soft skills. So soft skills are very different from the knowledge that you have. It's important to have knowledge. But remember today, knowledge is a finite life because in the earlier era, knowledge was encapsulated in books. People wrote books and you have to read the books to understand what is happening. They wrote research papers. So you have to read them to understand. And those who read books, those who read research papers were on top of the world and everybody listened to them because you didn't have the time or the patience or the ability to read them. And you could not spend the time in the library or elsewhere to read all of them. But today, all that information is available on the web. Everything is available. There are rich videos. There are lectures by the best professors. And there are so many things that are happening on the web that you don't have to remember everything and you don't have to uh, convey everything to people. I think it's a very important thing that you, know, you must understand. And that means that the edge that you had by having some kind of a knowledge that others didn't have is gone. Earlier, people had an edge because they had that knowledge, their red is all in their hard disk and they could recall it and they could express themselves. Now it's there because anybody will go to an app and Google and search and find out and get to the latest and you may not be up to date and somebody can be up to date because this happened to search last now. But the knowledge and hard stuff is important because but the knowledge has got lesser importance today because it's freely available across the board and everybody can search, everybody can Google. But the ability to analyze that knowledge, understand it and look at it to solve a problem is a special skill that you must have. That's why I go back to my first postulate that you must have a curious mind, must have a problem solving uh, attitude. You must know how to use technology and you must have the small skills, soft skills to communicate, to demonstrate body language. And why are these important? It's important because every year, maybe 60 million young people graduate globally. India graduates 10 million, that's one crore, six crore. China graduates maybe 1.2 crores, right? And they graduate all over the world and they're coming into the workforce, they're going into industry. So the clean competition, a lot of people are getting educated, the keen competition. And with the advancement of the web and the internet, everybody's on the same platform and everybody can communicate. So the world has shrunk and everybody can reach out to anybody else and all that is visible. And when the, all that is visible, what is so special about you that you stand out? And that is the question that you must answer. And that's why and not having that knowledge and the expertise is special. I won't belittle that, but that is special up to a point because you know better than somebody else. But somebody, everybody is smart and everybody can get access to that and they can always catch up. But your problem solving attitude, your curious mind, which allows you to be ahead of everybody else and your body language, your use of technology are skills which will remain to make you competitive and productive irrespective of what happens in automation and machines running the show in the next 15, 20 years. So I'm talking to you about generic skills that are extremely important for you to succeed. And look back, every successful person has had a curious mind. Every successful person had a problem-solving attitude. Every successful person had high passion energy. Every successful person used the technology of the day. Well, earlier people didn't have much technology like you do today, but they use it to become productive. And every successful person was more or less communicative, had the soft skill, had the gravitas, had the presence, and had the ability to communicate, etc. And were very confident and self-assured. And all that creates a very good human being. So I'll stop here to say, end by saying that I do believe that this skill set is extremely critical for everybody, especially in the future, in the age of automation, in the age of the digital revolution. Thank you. Thank you so much.
I'll just uh, ask a couple of questions. Um, there is a hard fact that while while um, these skills are necessary for you to perform, um, they don't become very necessary for you to get a job. And most graduates, the immediate immediate hustle is to just get into a job. Why do you um, think that that attitude might be dangerous uh, for for graduates? Because you know it might be easy to get a job, but it's hard to grow in it. So from an attitude perspective. Uh, why should people look at growth, especially in a competitive job landscape as today? Well, you must understand that uh, when somebody wants to go get a job, the employer has a getting criteria. What are the getting criteria? Earlier, they had a getting criteria that I will hide from only these colleges and you should have a pass percentage above that. Now, there's a lot of people who meet that getting criteria. So once you meet the getting criteria, you go to the next criteria and the next criteria could be an interview or a test. So they give you a test. Yeah. And then once you meet the test, you get a job. <laughs> because what do they test you? They test you not for your knowledge, they test you for analytical thinking and your logical capability. Because they want to say, are you a problem solver? Because they want problem solvers. And then you get into a job, right? So for that, you require communication. Yes, if there's an interview, and the marks for the interview, uh, there is a, a need for you to communicate, to answer questions. They will see your presence. For example, just now we had the UGC examination and uh, we saw the rank list, right? There was a young girl who uh, reportedly, as per a video, got the highest marks in the interview ever in history. And uh, she said uh, she was last to be interviewed and she went through 25, 30% issues. She's, she's a doctor. And... Uh, she was interviewed and uh, she answered the question and, uh, you know, it seems they ask her, what is the meaning of your name, et cetera, and et cetera. And she was very confident and she got high marks. And when you have an interview where you have to pass a test, written test, which will not be difficult for you because analytical and you can always memorize or go to the coaching Monday and learn. But then when it comes to the interview, if there's an interview, uh, you have to have communication skills. You have to have a presence. So these are soft skills that are there. And then after you get insight, these are all getting greater, get inside. How do you succeed? How do you compete? In business, you require communication. In business, you require soft skill. For to become a leader, you need all this. A leader is a person who has got followers. And a leader has to communicate to followers. A leader has to express to followers. A leader has to, has to review what the followers do. So all that is required. And that's why these are the skills that make you succeed. Now, all these skills may not be the skills to make you get a job. I think it's necessary. Because I won't hire anybody unless I interview them, talk to them, see their uh, body language and uh, listen to them and understand whether they're really smart or they are what, uh, you know, in the earlier era, people called kudumis. Uh, people who can <laughs> go to the coaching Monday and mug up something and write something because those are temporary, right? Because what you want are people who will grow in the job, people who take leadership positions, people who are problem solvers. And all that comes only through an interview. And that's why the soft skills are important. Thank you. Um, so you are a finance and law graduate. Uh, I would like to ask you that in your in the success that you were able to create for Infosys from your own journey over and above, uh, could you give an instance where it was not your finance or law knowledge or, or technical foundation, but one particular soft skill that may have been a superpower for you to create a positive outcome for your entire Infosys? Well, you know, I have an interesting background from that right from the time I was 14, 15, I used to read annual reports like you read storybooks. My father was an investor and I used to get annual reports at home of companies where he was an investor. And I used to read the annual report cover to cover. I used to read the Hindu newspaper. There was a column every day called Leo's News and Notes. We spoke about company results. I used to go to brokers, offices, other places, collect annual reports. By the time I was 21, 22, I had 2,000, 3,000 annual reports of Indian companies, overseas companies, I've read all of them. Because the FT, Financial Times used to have a service where you write to them, they send you annual reports of companies, right? Mm -hmm. So they used to come home and I read all of them. Now I used to go to shareholders meeting and ask questions of management in Bangalore. And we are well known for that. It's an interesting thing. And we did it just to prove to everybody we are smarter than them. You know, when you're young, you want to prove yourself. You're smarter than anybody you want to show off, right? And that is very, that's a good thing to have. There's nothing wrong in that. And later, I ran a finance company and I was an investor in Infosys. I went to the Infosys annual uh, meeting in uh, July of uh, 1993 
and ask the, the board questions. Of course, nobody knew it was a small company those days. Then I went to the first analyst meet held by any corporation in October 1993 in Mumbai and asked, and the Infosys board did it, and we asked them questions because Infosys has been a pioneer. And then uh, Nandan and Murthy met me and said, why don't you come and join and answer the question yourself? Now, oh. I, 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 I was a rank holder in my CA. I was a rank holder in my degree and I taught my college. So I was a pretty smart guy, right? But if I had not gone there, not spoken out, not asked them question, not stood up, not demonstrated that I've read it, I know it, and I have some deep insights and I've got a problem solving attitude, uh, they wouldn't have met me. I mean, did I need a job at that point of time? No. I didn't have a job. I had other things to do. I was uh, doing well in other things. But it was an interesting thing, and we joined. And once I joined Infosys, uh, I was able to do many things because I had a passion right from the time I was young that I want to be the best and set standards in everything I do. All right? That is an overarching ambition and passion. And Infosys, Murthy told us, we may not be the biggest, but we have to be the best in the world. So in the finance area, you know, we started with creating an annual report, which had the highest standard of disclosure, highest standard of accounting, investor protection, creating a very good independent board, corporate governance, uh, investor overreach and investor communication, quarterly reporting, quarterly limited review, quarterly audit, preparing the financial statement, the gap of seven countries, moving on to US gap, listing on the NASDAQ. We were the first in that country in all these things from 1994 till about 2002, 2003, we did everything. We did an ADR, first ADR for India, 1999. We're a small company. We listed at a valuation of $3 billion. Now you see some people listing and talking about it. We created a stock option plan, which made 20,000 people very rich. Uh, 500 people became dollar billionaires way back in the late 90s and early uh, 2000. So we did so many things which people are now discovering again and say, hey, we are there, we are there. We did all that. Why did we do that? There's an ambition to be the best. There's a platform which allowed that. And it was done voluntarily by us to set standards, right? And to set standards, you need to have the skills to communicate. I used to meet 300 investors a year. There were only two people in the country who met a large number of investors, myself and Keki Mistry of GFC. Mm. He is now CEO. He still meets them. I mean, we, have been, we had the longest in. And I got the award for the best CFO in India the first time anybody gave an award. Oh. And when I got an award, all the big company CFOs in uh, Bombay were looking and saying, who the hell is this joker? What has he done? We were in Bangalore. Infi was a small company. They've been around for 20, 30 years. They were in Mumbai. They thought they're big shots, but they gave me the award. Because we did more work than any of them had done. And we set standards. We didn't do routine work. Now, why did we do that? It was a curiosity to learn, to set standards. It was problem-solving attitude to solve problems and go to the next level. It was an ability to use technology because you know they're much underlying. We are a technology company, and is a is a is a, 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 a means to communicate and to transform to set standards because in the public market, the important value for valuation is the PE price earning ratio multiple. Mm -hmm. And why does the multiple come? The multiple come because people trust you. And why yeah. do people trust you? They trust you because you're honest, you are ethical, you uh, you are transparent and you report properly, and you give all the information, et cetera, and you stand by it, whether it's good or bad, right? So you have to set those standards. And uh, for that communication, soft skill, meeting people, body language, everything is important. Um, you know, all of learning all of this, uh, like you said, requires that inner hunger, inner drive, uh, because these skills are one that you can't just even go watch a video and just suddenly become a problem solver. It has to be an attitude and a mindset. What therefore do you think is the role of having a strong sense of purpose when you make your career decisions? And I, I say this even knowing that our many of our audience today will be boys and girls from rural areas where their immediate need might be that salary. But then still, you know, they might make a choice without purpose and just work like robots uh, and, and accept whatever is given. But how do you think purpose can accelerate this journey of learning and growing? Well, I think every, all individuals should have a big dream. You must have a dream of what you want to be, what you want to achieve in life. And remember, you have only one life. And the sun is going to rise in the morning and set in the evening, irrespective of what you do. And you are on a journey all alone. At the end of it, you're gone, right? You have a finite life, okay? Yeah. So you spend the first 20, 20 years of your life preparing for that life and studying and everything else and growing up. Then you enter a career or you work. So 
you must have a dream of what you want to be in life you want to be very rich you want to be very accomplished you want to be recognized as a star what do you want to do and you must understand you have one life so make the most of it now you could decide i want to be a manager and i want to be happy that's fine do anything that makes you happy everybody doesn't have to do everything what is the important life is you have to be happy and contented some mm. people could be content in being a clerk or being a office manager or being a worker and doing things well that's fine that's fine everybody doesn't have to be everything so you decide you should have a dream you decide what you want to do and work very hard to achieve that and don't let your dreams dry dreams take a long lot lot a lot of time to achieve you know one uh, one person told me long ago you should build castles in the air that is not uh, something you should not do but always build the foundations to meet the castle in the air okay so yeah. you should have the dream and you should work hard to achieve the dream and keep the dream alive and it takes time to achieve whatever you want nothing happens one night takes hard work smart work it takes luck it takes a fork in the road that you're taken a different turning and all those kind of things so i think that's uh, that's very important for you to understand and uh, you must understand that at the end of it you have to be happy and contented and you can look back into your career and say i did my best and i was happy and that's a good life but everybody is different but the important thing is have a dream work hard to get the dream and remember a job is a means to the dream a job is not an end in itself the salary check is not an end in itself okay it is a means to a good living and even if you get less if you join a good company work hard to prove yourself because the first 5 years of a career is all about learning you enter a job when you're 21 22 23 24 right and then the first 5 years of your of a job career is all about learning you must learn a lot because what you have to learn in the first 5 years to stand you for the next 30 years so look at the first 5 years as the means of learning go to the company that gives you the best training best exposure where you got unlimited opportunity to learn the compensation and salary is important but the salary is given there is no uh, means of learning is all repetitive work you're not going to build your skills you're not going to add to your knowledge you're not going to add to a repertoire of ability as a final question if there are three habits that that help you in your life and help to enhance these abilities what would be those habits or routines or practices well the first habit of reading i have to read i have to read every book that is printed i have to read every newspaper and i have an ambition to be abreast of everything so reading is extremely extremely important creating a network is important because we are known by the power of the network network through friends meeting people articulating is important and the third thing that kept me in good stead is communication and addressing people being part of entities where you put forth ideas and try to change regulations and the context see we live in a world of rules and laws which mm. determine business every business is impacted by rules and laws and regulations so what should be in good stead is my ability to understand all of them to understand what is required to be more competitive what is restrictive work with regulators work with other people other associations and address them and make things much better i'm still working to reduce tax terrorism in this country it's been a long hard journey and it will be mm. a long hard journey but you know i work with regulators like sebi like government of india rbi and a lot of thing good things have happened and it's impacted everybody positively everybody positive you don't go lobby for yourself you lobby to improve the ecosystem of everybody because if things are better for everybody you can compete and beat everybody if you think that you're going to get something fixed only for you by your lobbying power or your economic power then it's not going to stay because somebody else can do the same thing to you but what will stick to you is to make sure that you have something special to offer and do something special and do it faster and better than anybody else and improve the system so that you don't get bogged down doing unnecessary stuff so these are the three things that you know should be in good stead all right one is you know read reading read a lot understand be well informed and the second thing is you know creating a network i think networks are important you should know people will ultimately you know the network makes you much more useful and the third is working to improve the ecosystem regulations and everything else so that everybody benefits society benefits thank you thank you so much sir for your time
Okay. So, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Best wishes. Thank you so much. Bye. I was really inspiring to hear Mr. Pai so candidly speak about why is it that actually elements like our curiosity, our ability to be bold and ask questions without fearing what our own experiences or what our own uh, uh, which which stage of our career we're in. I think these skills are extremely important. These attitudes are extremely important if we want to go above and beyond than just doing a job. On that note, I would like to welcome our next speaker, Mr. Pratik Shukla, the founder of the Masai School. Uh, for me, I mean, you know, the, the very intent uh, with which Masai was founded, that is, we want to go across engineering colleges or, or, or across talent in the country who aspire to become coders and we will accelerate their journey, accelerate their possibility and then pair them in aspirational jobs. I think that's a very noble, uh, noble intent uh, and an extremely um, important function in India's um, employability enhancement ecosystem, especially in a time, especially in a time where very sadly uh, more than 70% of, of IT and engineering talent is considered as unemployable. Welcome Pratik um, to the United Nations Young Changemakers Conclave. I would love for you to share with our audience what makes a good coder, what makes a good product developer and why it is a lot more than just the code itself. Welcome Pratik. Yeah, thanks. Thanks uh, everyone in the x Billion Skill Lab. Uh, and thank you for having me over here. I was just enjoying the conversation which you guys were having with uh, Mr. Mohandas Spy, and it was amazing. Um, so yeah, like I think the the topic that we would be discussing today would be around the value of human intelligence uh, in the world of tech. And I think uh, what makes a good programmer is something which I'll be covering. But I would like to start with uh, one of the most powerful quote that I have that I think is something which summarizes what, what is needed right now um, from everyone, not just the coders, but for every department who are there. Uh, it is by uh, Elvin Toffler. Uh, it states that the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot write uh, and read, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. And this is something which is very, very important, uh, specifically in the in the in the digital and AI revolution, which is happening all around us, I think it is it is one of the most important aspect that most of the jobs that we are thinking right now are going to be automated. And uh, there are three very important, uh, uh, I think um, you might be reading more about it, that there are three important stats which are already there in the market, which is the first one being 65% uh, of the jobs that Generation Z, which is our, the next generation, is going to perform, is um, is like they, they don't exist yet. Okay, um, around forty five percent of the jobs that we are doing right now are going to be automated. So does that mean that we are going to have fewer jobs in future, and most of the things are going to be automated? That's not the case. Uh, most of the jobs, um, uh, and this is something which we have seen in the in the in the industrial revolution as well, that uh, with the machines coming into picture, uh, the productivity of, of the work that we were doing has increased manifold. The, the uh, wages have increased, the economy got a boost and all those things are going to repeat again. So it doesn't mean that there are going to be fewer jobs, but it is it clearly means that there are going to be new jobs which are going to be created and everyone needs to, everyone needs to be, um, adaptable to the changes which are happening around us and also at the same point of time would be learning and constantly evolving themselves and constantly challenging themselves in order to learn new skill sets that's that's the core important uh, and most important uh, thing which every every person specifically in tech needs to uh, do um, and there is also one more uh, study which uh, microsoft did with uh, with in collaboration with University of Washington. And that was, uh, um, they wanted to identify that what are the traits in a good programmer? And uh, what are the things that people look into good programmers who successfully uh, march forward in their career and also uh, uh, become really, really successful. 
there are 53 traits uh, which are being identified as uh, the most important traits that are needed in the uh, programmers and they are categorized into four important aspects so if you'll see the first one being personality uh, of a person who is going to be a coder second is uh, decision making and problem solving attitude the third one being uh, collaboration with the teammates and fourth one being the code so if you'll see around 25 percent of the time a person is going to spend in order to write a code even when the person is a programmer in the best of the best companies uh, rest 75 percent of the time needs to be utilized to uh, collaborate with the folks to make sure that things are getting done to work with different stakeholders to become a storyteller to become a problem solver and to collaborate with others so that is something which is needed right now. And uh, uh, we have adopted in Masai uh, a framework, which is very, very important for anyone uh, to become really, really successful, not just as a programmer, but uh, uh, holistically, if you want to develop anyone. Uh, the, this framework, which is very important, not just in tech, but all the other aspects, um, that is four Cs, and coding is not one of them. So the four Cs that we have is the first one being creative thinking, the uh, second one being critical thinking, uh, the four, uh, third one being uh, collaboration and fourth one being uh, communication skills. So these are the four important C's that I see uh, is very important for a programmer who has a core skill set as being a programmer uh, to really successfully march forward in their career and also uh, uh, become really successful in the end. Uh, but before Jumping to that, I think um, one very important thing uh, that I think the reason why we started Masai and uh, the reason why, uh, what is the need of the R right now is that um, currently the entire ecosystem or the entire education system that we have created is all centered around degrees. It's all, it's all centered around uh, churning out people. Uh, like we are graduating close to 1.5 million engineers every year. Um, and the harsh reality, as you rightly said, uh, is that 70% 70, 70 of the people are uh, not employable. Uh, actually, if you'll go deeper and you'll understand that, uh, uh, actually uh, from aspiring minds, uh, the data says that 95% of the people don't know how to write a single line of code, which is the most alarming piece uh, that we are dealing right now. So first, uh, the students need to basically um, become really good coders. And that is something which is not going to happen through universities who focuses on um, uh, memorization and also theoretical learning. It is going to be on the focus area that people need to utilize towards industry relevant learning. Either they can do it by themselves, they can go to the finishing school, they can go to the bootcamp. Uh, and the reason uh, why universities are failing is something which uh, I think uh, is a topic for another day. Uh, and we, we, we don't need to basically discuss that. Uh, today, I think um, I'm assuming that people, those who are over here or those who are listening to this are already um, um, a good coder or already knows how to do programming and uh, then what more they need to do to become relevant and to stay um, to stay relevant as well as to basically march forward in their career. So the four C's that I was talking about, the first one being, uh, I'll start with um, the critical thinking piece. Uh, if you are a coder, I think the most important thing, how you can develop your critical thinking, uh, the best thing that I can think of is data structures and algorithm. Okay. And uh, this is something which is very, very important uh, because uh, while solving problems on data structures or uh, while solving uh, algorithms, uh, you will be able to understand patterns. You will be able to develop the, uh, the capabilities of recognizing the patterns. And also at the same point of time would be, would be, uh, would be highly relevant in terms of solving any particular problem that you are going to encounter. And if you'll see the, the, the critical thinking aspect that we were speaking just now, it is about solving the complex problem and it is not about memorization. So you, you, you can come up with own solutions without being dependent on others. And that is something which is needed. So the first part uh, around critical thinking that can be done is uh, from uh, uh, doing a lot of uh, uh, problem solving around data structures and algorithm. Uh, that's one thing which I can think of. Um, and then there could be many other things. You need to have like a strong grip on mathematics. And that is also one very important aspect which is lacking in most of the most of the students uh, nowadays. The second one being creativity. So um, 
earlier creativity uh, was always channelized or, or was always used as that this is something which is which means that thinking out of the box and it is only restricted to uh, the uh, the artist or the musicians and uh, painters and all those kind of folks those who create some art uh, creativity is not restricted to any other thing related to uh, programming but that's not the case it is creativity is uh, there in every aspect so like for example if there is an accountant who is going to save a million dollar for you in the company he is a creative accountant similarly if there is a marketing executive who come up with a with a uh, with an amazing plan to to get growth in the company that's that's a creative uh, marketing executive so it is like applying thinking out of the box is something which is very very important and that is uh, relevant across everywhere uh, the third one being communication so i think one very important aspect on uh, which uh, mr mohandas pai has also highlighted that people uh, don't know uh, uh, what needs to be communicated and specifically in tech people think that i am a good coder i don't need to basically communicate to anyone uh, i can write my code and i can just push it or i can raise the pr which is going to be merged with your uh, with, with your master file and that is how uh, people think about it but that's not the case because with the emergence of all these finishing school coding boot camps and everyone um, we are all working towards making great programmers and uh, when that is going to happen your competition is continuously increasing uh, and you need to basically stand out from the crowd people are still believing in content absorption they are not content creator any, uh, at the moment so this is something which is very very important that we need to focus on any programmer needs to focus on like for example you are building a project uh, the most important thing is that you need to basically build the project in a, a right way then you need to push it on the github you need to make sure that you have readme profile uh, over there so that people those who are going to look at the uh, project would be able to understand what is in it in the pro in the project uh, you need to create your hash node profile you need to create your stack overflow profile because this is one very important thing that people or all the companies look for uh, apart from your coding skills because if you are able to communicate what you are doing right now um, then only you will be able to gel up with the team which are basically right now we are all working in a hybrid structure and communication or over communication is the most important thing so if you are a programmer you need to basically develop those skills and it is something which which anyone can learn the the important thing is that it is all about initiative that people need to take um, uh, while they are uh, while they are doing that and the fourth one being collaboration so i think uh, while a programmers already have solved this problem in 1980s it is not something which is uh, which needs to be which requires solving so there is a popular technique which was developed in 1980s uh, known as pair programming okay so this is the first um, uh, very important step that if you are learning programming and you have a peer group you can basically work in a collaborative fashion on any of the projects that you are doing uh, and do pair programming so pair programming works in a in a same way just like how you are riding a, a scooter and someone uh, uh, sitting behind you and navigating you so this is like uh, uh, this is this is one technique that we use uh, quite frequently in masai but this is also one technique that people can basically do it among their peers and among their friends uh, to develop that skill set so everything that we are talking about can be developed the only important thing is that people don't take initiatives towards doing that and this is something which stops them uh, from growing in their career they can crack jobs but they can't grow in their career if they don't have these skill sets so uh, this is uh, this is the framework that we use and this is the framework which we we believe that people need to have uh, in order to successfully grow in their career and i think like i have utilized these pointers in my life i was not a great programmer but uh, when i started my career from iit um, i know how to code uh, but then that is not what makes me launch a startup or uh, make it uh, uh, what what whatever it was uh, it was uh, because in the college when i went and i came from a very very small town so uh, probably most of the people have not never heard of that town uh, so i belong to that town and uh, uh, the best thing which used to happen in our school in 11th 12th is that our english teacher also used to speak in hindi okay so uh, i was not able to speak a single line of sentence when i went to iit uh, the only thing the only thing which i had was that i was a district topper and state topper and that's why i entered over there but over there everyone was this uh, everyone was state toppers and then that's when i realized that 
exposure is something which is missing a lot uh, and in the tier 2 tier 3 tier 4 cities as compared to tier 1 cities and uh, people need to basically work harder than the peer group to make sure that they are going to stay relevant so what i did was i uh, i focused a lot on all the extracurricular activities that used to happen in IITs. Um, over there, I, I focus a lot on building relationship with people. Um, so as a result, when I was starting my first company, I called like 17 people from IIT Kanpur, my seniors, my juniors, and those who were like uh, very good in academics as compared to me uh, to work with me. Okay, and that is something which has happened just in a one time because you build those relationships over there and you build that, uh, you do networking and other things over there. And that's the same thing which happened in Masai as well. So you don't need to basically uh, uh, go out and hire people because you know the people, those who worked with you uh, in the college times and uh, you, you they are just a phone call away because they've seen you working over there and they've seen you evolving over there. So that's something which is an initiative that needs to be taken. Um, similarly, from a communication perspective, I, I was like, uh, I read my first novel when I was in second year. Okay. And since then, um, I think probably now I read one, one uh, book a month. And that is something which is, which is always there that you need to read a lot more to basically keep on understanding to what is happening around you. And there's this like, um, knowledge is everywhere and this is something which we keep on uh, seeing even people those who have seen three idiots this is something which is very very um, important and the knowledge is everywhere you just need to basically take it and you need to uh, learn it like for example in my case while running a company there are certain things that you encounter for the first time okay how do you basically find out that what is the solution for it uh, the solution is very simple that you find out the best book which is relevant to that and you just read it and you'll be able to understand that what is the solution for it and this is the this is something which 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 needs to be developed in everyone. So you don't need to basically uh, rely on others to basically give you the solution. You can find out your own path. And that is what uh, critical thinking is. Um, and third, I think I can give you one example on the creativity part, because people call me creative in my company, in both the companies. So one, uh, when I was running Grava was earlier, at that point of time, um, there was this problem statement that there are too many too late ports which were there in all the cities where we were existing. Okay, now one way I can think of is that you can have one runner who is roaming around the city, taking the photos and getting the data. But uh, that is not feasible because th the numbers keep on coming in. Uh, and today there's a two led board over here. Uh, the next day it is going to be on some other house. So you need to have this runner running around all the days. That is not feasible. So what I did was I just uh, uh, quickly spread this message in colleges, okay, that uh, uh, your kids, you want pocket money, uh, click a photo and get 100 bucks, okay, and that has gone viral, okay, and suddenly in one day itself, you got the entire information of two led boards across the entire Bangalore, uh, without even basically thinking about that, what needs to be the operational way of solving this and other things. And there's the same thing which happened in Masai as well, when we were starting, we had no website, and we wanted to start our first batch. And the proposition that we had is too good to be true. Okay, so people were like uh, very afraid of understanding that how can someone uh, not take any money and train you and uh, place you for 5LPA and then charge you fees. And if you don't get 5LPA, you don't pay us a single penny. Uh, who does that in the real world? So uh, it was a very, very, um, uh, it, the proposition is quite uh, too good to be true for parents specifically. So for a first batch, what I did was I went to Nokri.com, okay? And I just posted a requirement over there that if you are uh, thinking about two lakhs per annum, okay, work with me for six months, I'll make you five lakh per annum uh, or I'll place you five lakh per annum or above and there's no fees. Um, and I suddenly got in a daytime 300 applications. So that's how we formed our first batch and that's how the journey started. So. I think that's like people need to... journey. I think that's a <laughs> yeah. fantastic journey, you know, I mean, to, yeah. to go. But just in the interest of time, if you don't mind, uh, I would like to ask you a question or two, um, yeah. if that's all right. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, um, the, the, the first question being that there is a, a lot of, that there is a suit demand for, um, you know, high quality coders, high quality product developers. And uh, I read recently that uh, a very large unicorn was throwing BMWs and, and and uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, organizations um, to attract them, but yeah. then I met uh, this one another another coder, uh, and he didn't he didn't go for the lure, and he said that because when I when I'll be one of the hundred people in the start of my career, 
I am going to be much Correct. like a machine where you know, the CTO Correct. will allocate work, and I am just sitting and coding. And his prediction Correct. was that that job itself in five ten years will not be required. Uh, Correct. Would you advise the 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 audience here, which is from about thirty cities across different colleges, they all engineering and IT students? Would you advise freshers to rather work for a smaller company where they play a more important role and they can learn these non technical skills? Uh, which which is which, which are clearly equally if not more important than the technical skills, and then go at a mid or senior level position in larger companies where then you can get to three series, but you might get to five series, and and also you Correct. might be able to stay in that job because the Correct. because it's also you know you get fired. So what would be your opinion in that context? So I think uh, as uh, Mohanda sir uh, is also speaking about the same thing that the first five years of your career is something which is very very important and you need to learn as much as possible because that is going to shape your next thirty years or forty years. Uh, and starting a career from a small company is something which is which we keep on advising it to our students. Okay, so don't go for. um the lure of uh, all these things and that company we know because they hire from us as well but uh, uh, the important thing is that ideally people should be starting um or even if they are going to start from unicorns i don't mind that people should be starting from unicorns because unicorns unicorns uh, have grown so much in a in such a short span of time um so there are going to be many challenges that they are going to learn from them so the categorization that i think is established companies versus startups uh, and uh, people should uh, start from startups and uh, the smaller the uh, startup the more responsibility you are going to get and the more learning you are going to have uh, and that's something which which uh, which i completely advise to all the all the uh, students that those who are there in masai uh, uh, i still remember there was this one company who had hired their first developer from masai and that's what that was the first developer and he was getting esops and everything and he was just asking me what is esop and uh, how does it work because they think that i am a critical part of the organization now that person has is actually leading a team and uh, has grown so much has become so matured in just one one and a half year and this is what the transformation uh, is and he is just not speaking about tech he is speaking about the entire product the entire business aspect and other things and that is the leverage that you get uh, when you start with uh, smaller startups or even the startups so so i always question. advise that yeah just a final question because you know we are running out of time um is why is emotional intelligence such an important emotional intelligence and empathy such an important skill as a coder so that is very important because most of the things which are which doesn't require emotional intelligence and empathy is going to be automated through ai okay and if that is not the case um, i think uh, what people need to understand that it this is the era of tech uh, and this this entire decade belongs to techies um, in every aspect and if that is the case um, uh there is going to be a hybrid working environment between the machines and the human and machines are going to play the role of uh, removing the redundancy but if human is not going to basically bring the emotional element for what humans are known for then it is not going to work out so that qualities in general uh, uh, are very very important if you are a coder uh, because uh, seeing the prospect what is going to happen in the future uh, so that's 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 uh, that's what i think uh is the is the relevance of empathy and emotional intelligence when you are coding and also then you'll be able to relate to the people problem the product you are building for solving people problem uh and if uh, you don't have those qualities you'll not be able to understand the problem statements those who are there uh, to uh, and you don't know what to build for them so so yeah that's why i think it is a very key important element thank you so much for enlightening our audience um, on the role of non technical skills to lead the world of tech uh i would advise all of you to please follow pratik on linkedin uh and i follow you and i look forward to having an in person conversation about how we could we love to <laughs> 21st century work please skills to every engineering graduate of the country and we will be yeah. in touch soon thank you so much yeah. for joining yeah. us yeah. thank um, you guys thank you thank you for having thank me you so thank you um now i have our next speaker uh whom i would say is much like a mentor to me and my co-founder Dr. Anil Pant, the managing director of Aptech, long before the long before you know uh, edtech became a big thing, upskilling was a popular narrative. Aptech took the initiative uh, to give 
creative skills like graphic design animation vfx to the far corners of our country and give graduates an opportunity to use their creativity and build it into a career dr anil pant it's an absolute pleasure to have you address our audience and we would love your perspective on this subject on the importance of 21st century work careers all yours dr pant thanks thanks amit and uh, you know i was listening very carefully to what mohan and uh, pratik were talking uh pratik made a very nice observation you know he talked about coding and he talked about programming and let's try and understand the distinction between the two basic coding is just the routine typing of code i mean you may make some errors in it you may you, you know you may write great code but eventually that job will get uh, sort of uh, fulfilled by a code generator programming sort of reminds you of something like a symphony where there are a lot of elements which go into creating a program coding is just one element of a program so uh, you you know when you talk about a program you talk about the ui ux you talk about uh, how much time it takes to solve a person's problem you talk about uh, the ease of uh, maneuverability for a user and there is a whole lot of uh, stuff which is other than pure coding which goes into creating a program and if you want to become a good programmer there are certain things that are absolutely essential for a student and uh, one of the things that i didn't hear today was passion for your job i mean you know i think mohan referred to it in uh something that he was talking about but if you're really passionate about what you do then you know you you really going to enjoy your work i mean monday is going to feel like a friday and uh, you you're not really going to look at time when you are doing what you're doing i'm going to share two or three examples of this with you uh, samyak with your audience uh if you go back uh, about 20 years okay i mean people talk about 2 3 years and the edtechs but if you look at the it revolution in india whether it's the uh, software services business or uh, any of the id companies whether it was wipro infosys tcs anyone the first level of programmers went from companies like nit and aptec I mean, you never had uh, engineering colleges those days very very few now what changed what changed was the mass scale of employment that uh, outsourcing of this business brought to india and when people were outsourcing as opposed to placing on site they wanted to see certain qualifications i think pratik said very rightly universities don't understand anything and you you, you know i was uh, addressing actually a vice chancellor's conclave about 350 of them and one of the vice chancellors very cockily asked me that uh, mr pant you're from tcs and uh, you know you hire 50000 students every year you should be paying us for using our raw material and interestingly enough i told him yeah you you know mr vice chancellor i would love to pay you if your raw material were usable i mean unfortunately the raw material that you supply to us needs 100% rework and these people that we hire need to undergo 6 months of uh, unlearning and learning to become deployable so you're not really learning too much from colleges i mean you're not really learning too much in your school college university now where do you get these skills from okay now people call them 21st century skills people give them fancy names but the fact is that they are all around you and i'm going to share a couple of uh, interesting little stories this was about uh, 15 16 years ago uh, this is when i was working in a company called wipro and we were driving from cochin to palakkad and uh, my regional manager was telling me sir it's impossible to get a sales guy in cochin and this was you know of course to sell computers uh by the time we reached palakkad i told my regional manager that you've got your sales guy and your sales guy is going to be this driver 
Now, why did I want to hire Biju? You know, during that conversation of three and a half hours, I had my regional manager. I had two of the distributors along with me in the car. The fact is that for three and a half hours, none of them could sustain a conversation with me. But Biju, who was driving that car, in his uh, broken Malayalam and English, oh, sorry, broken English and Malayalam, kept a running conversation with me and kept me engaged for three and a half hours. Now, if that guy could keep me engaged for three and a half hours, he could definitely keep anybody engaged for any length of time. Today, Biju is probably one of the very senior people in uh, Wipro. He's uh, remained in sales. And he's probably, I think, if I'm not mistaken, he's the national sales head of uh, one of their uh, IT businesses, one of the IT verticals. Now, what was it about Biju that attracted me to him? It is not his degree. It is not his, uh, you know, he, he was not an MBA. This guy had just done one year of college and dropped out because he had to uh, sort of support his family. And he was driving a taxi. What attracted me to him as an individual? This is important for people to understand. The fact that Biju could sustain a conversation for three and a half hours about extremely diverse topics Right from Kerala politics, he was describing the, you know, sites along the way. He was talking about the cuisine of Kerala. He was talking about uh, what do Keralaites like to drink? What, what do they like to eat? He was talking about why Kerala is one of the most educated uh, uh, societies in the country. He was talking about women empowerment. Now, that is what makes a person that is what makes a individual and those life skills are all around you now you um, you you know when samyak and i were talking i was telling him that we typically have about 30 35000 students every year in the media and entertainment space where they come to learn graphics animation gaming design etc etc from us and each of these kids has three jobs. The fact is that they have three jobs not because they know how to do Photoshop or Adobe or Maya or whatever. The fact is that they know how to work as part of a team. The fact is that they learn how to work under deadline pressure. The fact is that they are taught how to present what they've created. The fact is that they are encouraged to create stories. And these are things which unfortunately are not available in the formal education system today. I'm not saying it won't come in in the future. Maybe it will. And I hope that the new education policy does something about this. But if you want to go out in the workplace and create a niche for yourself or create that or get that first job, which is your dream job, you need to build these natural skills. And you, you know, I won't even call them 21st century skills. I'll call them life skills because you learn some code today, five years, seven years, 10 years from now, trust me, it'll be obsolete. You'll, learn, you'll need to learn something else. But these life skills that you learn will remain with you forever. And these life skills is what will make you employable over an extended period of time in your life. The second thing that I want to talk to you about, I mean, you know, is um, people talk about leadership. Where do you find the best leaders today? My humble submission is that the best leaders are found in the armed forces. You know, you have these young lieutenants, young captains. Imagine a situation where a 21, 22 year old boy, typically your age, that's the age of the audience, which is in this uh, seminar. They're climbing up Tiger Hill, leading a platoon of maybe about 30, 40 people behind them. A 45 degree terrain with the enemy firing down at them, knowing that they're going into sure death. But they've got 30, 40 people who are at least about 10 years, 12 years older than them following them. Now that is leadership. And where does that leadership come from? And, you know, my young friends, let me tell you that leadership comes from passion. 
for these people it's the passion their love for their country that is their passion now you need to discover what your passion is and whatever you are passionate about follow that to its entirety because you are going to excel in whatever you do if you follow your passion i mean today i mean i tell my own children you know that just don't worry about your i mean your marks are not at all important if you ask me today do i remember my 10th standard 12th standard degree marks absolutely not i don't even know what grade i got in 10th what grade i got in 12th but do i remember what are the life changing experiences that i have had absolutely 100% i remember every single life changing experience that i have had and finally the little bit of advice that i have for you is you know when you go out there 1.5 million engineers coming out every year right and uh, people say that only about 10% 20% of them are employable what does this mean it means that out of you know 1.5 million about 300000 are going to get jobs why are they getting jobs because they are able to differentiate themselves and that differential is something that you need to learn and that is you um, probably creating your elevator pitch because when your cv or when you're being interviewed by a company that's going to hire 100 people how do you differentiate yourself and that is something that you need to practice all right the enough things that you can see on the website i think you know uh, 21st century skills i, I think some of you guys have enough uh, things that can teach people how to do this but i'll share the example of my daughter with this group my daughter works with visa great job great company but this is a live example of uh, she spent almost about 10 hours developing this one minute pitch because she knew she's going to have that one minute when the interview say interviewer says tell me something about yourself this is the first question that any interviewer asks you and you've hooked them or you've lost them in that first minute so this is how akansha's uh, pitch went and i want to share this with all of you who are there on this program so that you realize what you can do in one minute she said my name is akansha pant i'm 22 you've given me very little time to talk about my skills as a coder for that i would need a lot more time but in the limited time that you've given me let me tell you something about myself that i believe will add value to your organization she said i am a martial artist i am a black belt in uh, karate i have spent 9 years of my life learning this and what the last 9 years have taught me is passion integrity hard work and i never ever give up and i believe that these are four qualities which would add tremendous value to your company by hiring me as an individual did she get the job damn sure she got it right now it's a different thing that there there, there were about 400 people applying for that role there were only about 20 who got in but these 20 obviously all 400 were good coders because they were all coming from good institutes they were coming from bits iits the best colleges in bangalore and all of them were equal in their level of coding so how do you sort 20 out of 400 now that one minute pitch in terms of what differentiates you from everybody else you will need to work on your own pitch when you're going and making that uh, story about yourself so samyak i've uh, You, you know, you've given me ten minutes to speak. I've spoken for nine and a half minutes. Being a sales guy at heart, half a minute is the profit that I'm returning to you. Samir, you're you're muted. Thank you so much. Uh, I think this is exactly why I always find that every time I meet you virtually or in person, there's so much to learn from you. Um, in the interest of time, I'll ask you one question, um, which I think would be the most important. to enlighten the audience you very rightly spoke about the importance of passion right but it's also a hard it's a hard uh, process to a discover the passion 
and b make it into a profession that can give you income because at the end of the day you know uh, we need money our audience is here uh, they have to pay loans they have to take care of their families and so on so a how do you discover your passion and for example if it does not match with your profession how do you pick the profession in a way that you can still give it your all and then find your passion elsewhere so la uh... Let, let let me give you the example of an iitian okay who uh, finished his iit but he completed his iit only to prove a point to his dad that he could he was a brilliant artist and his passion lay in creating something now uh, this guy was one of our students actually in uh, mac and uh, he came in he spent another about year and a half learning everything about it he set up his own studio and he sort of within about 3 years of uh, doing the program he runs a company now which employs about uh, 350 people somewhere right now a lot of you will think that uh, how do i discover what i'm passionate about some of you may be great uh, average singers right i mean you may be a good singer but you may not be a singer who is good enough to go into playback and earn a living out of it but when you go into your workspace and when you sing you're probably going to be the best there that's going to make you very very popular that's going to sort of set you apart from the others the guys above you are going to think okay hey wow this guy is a very engaging guy he's a team player he's this he's that and you'll probably get that one promotion which someone else would not so how do you your passion can be exploited in any way i mean if if you like the stock market uh, our chairman rakesh junjunwala always says you know he came to mumbai with 5000 rupees in his pocket and uh, look at where he is today so i think that's a very very uh, pertinent point that you made and i hope that the audience can take back a mental model of of you know how to pick the right career and what it takes to perform in that career on that note thank you so much for being with us dr pant thanks thanks um, so much okay thank you very much um friends our next speaker is mr ashwin yardi ceo of cap gemini one of the largest and the most aspirational employers in the world of it um and 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 an aspirational company for so many graduates so what do you look for when you hire that's a very good question uh, samyak uh, so first of all i i would say you know since lot of you are in tech uh, you already made the choice and uh, you you would be aspiring to be in the tech industry and in that context what's very important for all of you to know is what's the trend in the industry uh, and that's what we try to uh, hire for uh, for our you know associates uh, to build their careers now first first and foremost uh, what's happening in the industry is uh, software is everywhere you know when i started my career software was probably only in the financial services industry which use software in core part of product uh, then of course there was uh, telecom which also had core part of uh, software as uh, key to its product but now what you see is every product has a software uh in fact you know a few years ago uh, one of the auto companies launched uh their cars in consumers uh, event because it was like a consumer product with lot of software so software is everywhere second very important thing which all of you should be aware of is because of that today the buyers are very disparate they come they are not only the cios who are the buyers okay so not only the chief uh, information officers but today you see buyers being chief marketing officer chief hr officer chief product officer a chief manufacturing officer each one of them could be the buyer of uh, our services uh, then uh, the other very important thing is speed of products and technologies uh as in when we started probably you would have one new version or one new product of an erp and then the next one came after 3 to 4 years today whichever areas you are in you would see a new product almost if not every day every week 
and that's very important for all of you to know when you're building your skills and then fourth point is automation and ai is everywhere uh, but you the way you each one of you have to look at it is automation and ai are complementing or enabling your human intelligence so that's what we call you know uh, human intelligence enabled by ai and it should not be something which is replacing the human intelligence so what does all of this mean all of this means that number one you need to have technology skills but you also should have a lot more skills and aptitude towards knowing the business and knowing the industry and early part of career you will work in many different industries so i wouldn't even say you have to specialize in one industry but what you should uh, progressively get deeper let's say you're working with insurance client uh, what does insurance mean you know what is a, a property and casualty insurance you know how how is subrogation done you know what are the various aspects of premiums uh, you know so you should start getting understanding the industry well you know and that's the key part and it goes back to uh, if you're working uh, with non cio cxos they would expect you to talk their language the second very important thing when we hire as i said today there is a new technology almost every second day every third day which means today you will be trained you you know you come over from you know masai or aptech and we will hire you for the skills they have given you but what we will see very soon is you need to be trained on a new product so what we really look at is your ability to learn and adapt very quickly uh so learnability is extremely critical and i would encourage all of you learn by first principles you know don't if you are again an sap or an oracle or a salesforce trained don't learn the product uh, of course you have to learn it but understand the processes behind it understand the domain behind it and then you can always overnight adapt to any product and lastly a lot has been said uh but i want to reiterate uh today you are or we all are working with end customers of very different profile you know uh, which means you need to have the conversation skills uh, you could call it communication skills uh, you could call it storytelling skills but the important thing is your ability to connect in business and not in java or dot net or python Uh, so i say i would look at these are some of the skills shamyak uh, we really look at uh, when we are uh, hiring uh, new people uh, and i would advise each one of those who are on this call to see that they focus on some of these skills uh, when when they start their career thank you so much sir i'm going to ask you one question um like you and the previous speakers they very rightly said that there are these skill sets which are required over and above your technical competence but i'm going to share one hard fact uh, majority of the audience today uh, and we've deliberately curated it so are from peer to tier 3 cities or you know um, backgrounds from where the intellectual exposure the foundational intellectual exposure required may not be there how do you then suggest to our audience how can they learn these skills because the employer is not going to care whether you are from iit iim or from an xyz college if you are able to present yourself in a certain way yes you have the opportunity and people are becoming mature in that sense but let's say one of one of the the uh, one of the audience members today is from a, 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 a semi rural area and now he is told that you have to learn these skills how does he do it and it's not a function of money or no money it's about how because by watching some tech talks you don't become a great storyteller else billions of people who study tennis so in your view how can we actually learn these not through time because in my entry level job straight out of college i still need to be able to display these traits and abilities so i think that's a very good question samyak and i would say two or three things you know first uh, what's worked very well now is uh, what covid has taught us uh, and we had a very good experience is there is tremendous talent across any part of the country you know tier 2 tier 3 and i just want to share we did a program called sakhi drishtikon uh, 
so as the name sounds you know it it was focused on women talent and we actually trained 500 women from tier 3 to tier 4 villages and uh, in cloud and ai and they could join us so what i would suggest and strongly advise is two or three things first the good part of today's world is keep learning is democratized a uh, lot of learning is now on different types of moocs or cooks uh, you know online universities uh, so look at various right universities which you know you can leverage a lot of them are free so it it also uh, you know it's not cost prohibitive number one number two is uh, i would strongly encourage create a, a a work group of friends within your region okay Uh, there is no in some ways no learning especially some of these skills if you don't practice and don't experience it. and the only way you can practice and experience is if if you, you you actually do it and the way to do it is create your own friends families work groups and again what uh, pandemic has taught us is you don't need to meet each other or be in the same room to practice all of this okay so second thing i would say is uh engage with the right forums and create your right groups so that you can actually practice you know your conversation skills your uh, you know ability to tell stories or your ability to uh, you know learn uh, how you want to communicate okay and lot of it is as you rightly said right? it's not uh, looking at tedx uh, videos okay some of it will help you but the best way to learn is to practice okay and if you have to practice it before you are on the job form your uh, common friends work groups and help each other to make it happen third uh, again something which uh, I, i would strongly again reiterate is there is focus on uh, industry skills okay and when i mean industry uh, again year one you don't need to be a, the most biggest expert in any particular industry but oh, i would you know i can as i said i can always teach people uh, the coding you know but what we always desire is how well you know the domain and how well you know the industry okay so uh, again when you go out you know observe so when you are going to a big bazaar you know to do grocery shopping okay see how technology is being used in that entire experience okay you will see or you go and buy something on big basket or you go buy and you know do any kind of experience and try to understand how the life cycle of the entire either sales process production process is leveraging technology and for that you you know you can always speak to somebody on the shop floor or the store uh, but a uh, lot of it you can you know if if uh, ob- observe and you know absorb so i would say these are three or four things i would encourage everyone and lastly lot of companies have very good internship programs okay so uh, even when you are in your third year engineering or fourth year engineering uh, i would encourage uh, each one of you to find opportunity to do internships with corporates and again it, at times it doesn't even need to be an it corporate what you need is a corporate experience uh so these are a few things i would strongly suggest uh you know so that you are ready uh, when when you start your day one uh, in in any enterprise thank you so much for sharing your words of wisdom and i hope that our audience can connect with you on linkedin and and follow you and your posts uh it was an absolute honor to have you and i look forward to having a conversation later with you on how we can take 21st century skills to the last mile thank you thank you so much uh, i would not like to invite uh, my co-founder gorov jain um to to conduct the last session of this uh, conclave gorov all yours uh thank you samak i would now like to welcome um this is sen gupta who is the head of hr at accenture technology a very warm welcome to you ma'am yes thank you thank you gorav uh, it's a pleasure to be here and thank you for inviting me and i would just like to add that uh, accenture when i was in college was one of the most 
sought after companies and even a lot of my friends who did MBA, I remember they are still actually associated with Accenture after a decade of experience, which kind of shows the work culture that exists at Accenture and the kind of hiring policies that they have. So without uh, you know wasting much time, I'm, I would like to ask my first question. What are the soft skills that you applied in your journey that led you to success You know, for such a long career spanning for more than 22 years? That's a great question, Gaurav. Firstly, I would like to start by saying that, you know, there is nothing called soft skills. Everything is a skill that is most important for us to live our lives and to do our jobs and be good citizens and be good human beings. That's after all what we are here for today. If I were to, you know, come down to three things, you know, that has really helped me personally in my career, you know, other than, of course, my functional skill, because I'm an HR professional, is what we, you know, what, what we say as learning agility, the ability to learn very, very fast. The first thing I realized after leaving college um, was that with college, learning does not stop. At the end of college, learning does not stop. It actually starts all over again. You know, when, when I was in school, I was thinking that you know, once I finish school, I, I will never have to, you know, really focus on learning. I could just live my life. But that's not true. To live life, you have to learn every day. There are new things around us. There are new people around us. There are new technology around us. I have moved cities. So every time I move cities, I have to learn how to live in a new city. So learning agility, I think, is the number one skill. Um, that has helped me and, and, and really reinvent myself over the years uh, as, as I've progressed through my career. The second is communication skills. A lot of you know, the speakers today did speak about it. You know, fundamentally, in my mind, communication skill is very simple. It is the ability to, 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 to be able to tell your thoughts and your ideas to others in a very simple way. That is what communication is all about. As long as somebody that you're trying to communicate with understands exactly what you're saying, is excited by what you have to present, that is what communication skill is. And if you don't have communication skills, how will people get to know who you are, the great ideas that you have, the thoughts that you bring to the table. So communication skill is very important. Communication skill has two things. One is verbal communication, as we are talking today, and written communication. You know, in the last one and a half years, I think the importance of written communication has become much, much more important, much more critical. We have, you know, we are pretty much communicating with each other via email, WhatsApp, all, all kinds of digital modes. Though it's more technology element, it, it requires the basic foundation skills of good, good uh, written communication. So that what you're saying, somebody else who's receiving it knows exactly what you're trying to say. And the third thing is collaboration. And why I say that is we don't do anything in life all by ourselves. You know, we live with our family, our friends, we take vacation with others. Even in the workplace, we don't do anything by ourselves. Even if you might have a job that requires you to work in your laptop, you will still have to work with others. You will have to work in teams. You'll have to work um, with people who, are more, you know, who have more experience than you. You will have to perhaps at some point guide people who have, who are, who have less experiences. So we are constantly working with other people. And the ability to do that, the more you are comfortable doing that, uh, you know, I feel that that really makes it much, much more easier. So three things, ability to learn, ability to communicate clearly and simply. And third is ability to work with other people, collaborate with others. Uh, thank you so much for that insightful uh, answer, ma'am. Uh, my second question is, ma'am, why is it that companies today are giving lesser importance than before to degrees while hiding. Why, why, why is it the case? That's a very good question, Gaurav. Um, I, I will phrase it a little differently. Um, it's, not, it's not that companies are giving lesser importance to degree, right? A college degree, either a three-year degree or a four-year or a five-year degree, whatever you have, 
does provide you some foundational skills. But what companies and organizations like us are looking for is not a certificate, but the skills. So you may have you know, really acquired that skill through a degree. So if you, for example, uh, you know, are, have, a, have a bee farm, so you have knowledge about the pharmaceutical industry, right? So what a company is not looking for is the certificate or your grade alone, but what we're looking for is your knowledge of the pharmaceutical industry and its processes. So degree is important because it provides you foundational skills, but just having the degree does not you know, really mean anything. It means what, you, what companies are looking for is what skills do you bring to the table, right? And in addition to that, we are also looking for skills that are not only just coming out of a degree, but also, like I said, you know, life skills. And some of the skills you, I, I think you are taught in your colleges as well, right? Through debating, through, uh, you know, through, through all, the, all the extracurricular activities that you do. These are the skills you anyway build through life. So it's, it's not about degree versus skills, but it is skills first. So a degree might give you that skills, but you may learn that skills from somewhere else as well. You could be self-taught as well. And we have a lot of people who are self-taught and have been very, very successful. So it's skill first as opposed to degree first. And you have to start to think about what skills have you acquired from your degree? Like for example, I, I, I did two, two, I have two degrees. One, I did my graduation in statistics and mathematics. And then I did a degree in human resources. I used both these skills and I started my career as a compensation specialist and an analytics specialist. So because I had a statistics and maths background, I, have, I still have very high mathematical skills, but I have also built HR skills. So my degree did help me, but the focus was really on the skills. So think about the skills. So your degree should not be a, um, a constraint for you. You can build those skills other, in other ways as well. But if you build the skills through a degree, that's great as well, or maybe a certification. Um, so so that's, that's really about, so remember that it's skills first, irrespective of where you have uh, really learned those skills from. Either you've learned it through a certification, a formal degree, or maybe you have self-taught yourself, and that's fantastic as well. Absolutely agree with that. Skill first approach is, I think, what uh, the youth today, in fact, all of us, uh, need to follow. Uh, my next question for you, ma'am, is often, you know, youth today choose a career path based on what is glamorous and maybe what, what gives you a lot of money. Um, mm -hmm. what, what, what do you think is the role of having a purpose behind choosing a profession or, or a career? Well, you know, you know, at the end of the day, you know, if I go back to when I started off, having a, you know, have a good, having a salary and a good earning and a steady earning was, was very important. So I don't undermine the importance of having having you know uh, looking for a salary looking for something that gives you a steady income so that you can take care of your family you know it is important you know having you know it helps you it helps you take care of your family it gives you stability it helps you uh, do the things that you perhaps you know want to do the the one thing i'll, I'll say is that money alone will not give you the satisfaction it really doesn't right you know it will give you satisfaction in the short term it will help you get some of your foundations in life set maybe you could make sure that you have you know all the things in your maslow's hierarchy taken care of but beyond that if you really go back today you know in college in you know in your school what are the things that gave you real joy don't forget about that yeah hold on to that because that is what your passion is and find ways of exploring that. It, that's what will make you happy. If you know, if I look at a Venn diagram, since all of you are technology, you know, you have skills, you have passion, and at the you can operate at the intersection. That is the best, right? That is the best uh, place to be. It may not always happen. You know, let's be realistic. Sometimes you may have to just focus on your skills and really. Uh, Honor that and 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 deepen that so that you can have a, a exciting career ahead of you. But try and find the passion as well, even if it is you know even 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 if it is not in your job, find that expanded passion. And somewhere you will find that 
intersection. It is it is not easy. It does not happen easily, to be honest, right? Um, you may have to you know experiment with a few things here and there. But in the long run, if you keep your eye out on passion, on your what is your what is your passion, it definitely gives you more joy. The second thing is, even if you are in a job that perhaps you're not liking that much, you know, we all are in the, in my last 22 years, I have been in jobs which I which I perhaps did not like, and it was a drudgery, it was not so good. What has helped me is to always remember the big picture, you know. If I'm doing a job, what is it at the end of the day helping do? If I'm coding something, is it really helping, you know, create more business, making making somebody's life a little bit easier? Uh, if you are creating a product or if you are, you know, even helping, you know, create a, a you know, train somebody, is it really helping another, another human being? That always, you know, reminds me that why am I doing my job? And that that helps me, you know, stay connected to the passion. So so remember that you 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 will have days where you will feel in a job that you know this is not where I want to be. So on those days, think about what the impact of your job is. Every job has an impact. Every job kind of adds on and really creates the big impact. If you are not able to find that importantly have a conversation with somebody around you why am i doing this job how does it help the help achieve the big picture how does it help serve serve my country so at the end of the day that's you know it could be something as as big as that even if you're doing something something you know that does not seem on that day very important absolutely ma'am having that anchor of you know having a strong purpose is so important especially in today's world when things are changing so fast and kind of a bit more complex than they used to be yes uh, my next question is ma'am like i said you know you had a, such a long and illustrious career uh, you must have had people in your team who you work with or you were probably you know working under you um, you know not from the best of colleges not from the best of you know so called uh, universities but they somehow used their creative problem solving emotional intelligence you know negotiation skills human skills to kind of achieve what had to be done would you please share some of these, uh, you know, instances with our with our listeners, please? Absolutely. The first thing I would like to say is that, you know, like I said, your your education is your starting point. It is not your ending point. You know, it has given you foundational skills. So, um, and you know, I'm not a big fan of you know ranking of universities, etc. I know there are a lot of a uh, lot of uh, lot of external uh, agencies that do that every you know if you have spent four years three years with, you know studying something I'm sure you have built some foundational skills that is what they call as your jama puji that is what you are starting from um, I have you know lived all my life my childhood from smaller towns I've, I've studied in vernacular colleges but I have what I've always had myself what I've always had with me is my passion to succeed, my passion to make an impact. Um, and like I said, I, I started, and I can only give my example, I started with basic foundational skills. I had a mathematics and statistics, so I took an analytics job, and, and that was it. When I went for the interview, nobody saw what college I came from, but what they, when, I, when I sat for the test, I knew exactly uh, everything that you know, the test had to offer. I, my, my technical skills were very good. The second thing, like I said, is over the years that, you know, I've kept my eyes and ears open and I've learned a lot from the people around me, right? Uh, I have learned a lot from the people I have worked with, the people I have, supervisors who have worked with me, and I've seen what skills have made them successful. And I've practiced that skill. It's as simple as that. I have practiced how to talk a lot. Uh, I have practiced how to write better. I have, so it, it really comes down to, how do you practice the skill over and above and over and over again, and you will get better. So my, you know, don't, don't get, don't let what college you've come for, even if it is the, you know, the top ranking college or not define your future. You know, what you start with is, is foundational skills, where you go is totally in your hands. 
And, and in my experience, there are the three things that remain, you know, ability to learn, ability to work with other people, and the ability to really communicate your ideas very, very clearly. If you, if you just focus on these three skills, it, it is a lifetime. Uh, you have a lifetime to hone them and really define your future for yourself. So don't, don't box yourself based on, you know, your starting point. That this is only your starting point. The whole, your whole, uh, you know, life is ahead of you. Um, and, and, and if you continue to learn, you will learn the skills that will make you successful. And as you can see, Gaurav, I'm a big optimist about this. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for uh, for this, ma'am. And any um, you know closing remarks or any advice to so many of college youths uh, that are you know watching today and will be watching later, uh, you know the recording. Any any advice for them? You know what kind of mistakes can they make? What what kind of things that they can explore? Any anything, ma'am? Okay. So I, I think I will end with, you know, really my reflection of what the last one and a half years have been. It has not been easy for not in, for all of us, right? Um, it has been very tough. None of us were prepared for the pandemic and what it brought, brought to us personally. You know, families, schools, colleges, even organizations have been disrupted. But there has been a positive side that has come, come out of this, right? Uh, for large organizations like us, uh, or or even for indiv each individual, we've realized that you know uh, uh, the the power of uh, the power of change. Right, big companies like us overnight had to change the way we work. We had to you know really rethink what where people can work from. Now people are never, not coming to office anymore. They're working from home. These things were no, absolutely not even uh, thought to be possible two years ago, but now it is possible. So I think the pandemic has shown the power of change and the power to make the impossible possible. And with that, what has happened is particularly in the technology industry uh, and companies that are investing in technology, a lot of transformation, a lot of change that was maybe perhaps would take 10 years is now going to take maybe two years and everything has gotten accelerated, which means there is a lot of opportunities coming your way. You are the future of uh, a future for us. And so there's a lot of opportunities coming your way. It is for you to uh, grab those opportunities. The second thing that has happened with the pandemic is what can be done anyway. Right. Uh, earlier, it was a few cities that companies were placed out of. Uh, but now for the last two years, everybody has been working from anywhere. So that means opportunities are everywhere. And that's something, you know, uh, to, to, for you to remember that there are opportunities and there are opportunities everywhere. But that means that, you know, you have to be ready yourself, be prepared with the skills I spoke about in addition to the technology skills that all of you I'm sure know, you are researching for yourselves, you know that cloud security, artificial intelligence, platform skills, these are the skills of the future. Um, and, and I'm sure you're investing in that, but you will be able to invest if you continue to put a target for yourself that I will learn something new every week, I will learn something new every month, I will learn something new every quarter and every year. Um, so I will end my session saying that you know, there are opportunities, there are opportunities everywhere. The future is in your hand. You can make the most of it. The key is to constantly keep learning, constantly keep practicing. Don't forget your communication skills and, you know, try and work, learn to work with others, learn to work in teams, learn to co collaborate. These are the three fundamentals. If you remember, I think you will be good. With that, thank back you, to you, Gaurav. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, uh, for uh, you know sharing your extremely valuable thoughts and insights with us on a Saturday and taking taking out like, your valuable time. I'm sure a lot of the people who have been watching this would be really, really inspired and would be on the right path of focusing on skills, having a purpose, and developing their human skills. Th thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much. I have a final question, actually. Uh, sorry, uh, it's out of protocol, but I yes, go ahead. go ahead. No, I I, I read something really interesting that 21st century skills, uh, the, the ones that we spoke about, are actually 
uh, superpowers for women to lead the world of work because a lot of so what is 21st century it's opportunity to be human again right and 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 that means being practical being empathetic compassionate things that were looked upon as weak unfortunately have become the biggest strengths so uh, i would like uh, through through what you're about to say next or respond i would like to encourage the women watching us and who will watch the videos later that how you know they can enhance their 21st century skills which are more innate in them than men like i mean it's a fact uh, you know I, I know that my mom and my sister and my friends will be far more empathetic and compassionate and practical uh, and creative problem solvers than we are because we often you know take the take the aggressive path or just just you know uh, uh, do things often without thinking what is your view on something like this thank you for bringing this topic up uh, i really appreciate it uh, shamik uh, so firstly you know I, i do have faith that both men and women have the ability to be empathetic creative and human uh, you know i i, I don't believe it, uh, you know that, that that it should it should these qualities are gender specific but of course you know there are some gender stereotypes that you know have led us to believe that you know women are more empathetic than men but you know research has shown that everyone can be empathetic if if we focus upon it but i would say that with the technology and particularly for the one and a half years that the way the technology industry has um has transformed itself there is an opportunity which is unique for women and i would say that number one is is an like i said being able to work from anywhere right we do know that you know uh, you know perhaps not everybody can relocate and you know uh, you know there are family considerations there are children there are other lots of consideration perhaps that women cannot relocate to another city to take a job that constraint is gone away. it has gone away the second thing is technology for the future the, the new technology does not differentiate between men and women anybody who can learn past can can really succeed and these are new a new area so nobody has an advantage you know if there are skills where men have traditionally been more proficient on then men will always have a edge because you know they will have deeper skills but these are all new skills which nobody has so it is you know whether you whether you're a man or a woman if you can learn it it is you, you can succeed very very so so that way technology has been become a very very big equalizer and the third third thing is work from home which has been enabled you know when i say work from anywhere it's work from any city that's another part but the other element is work from home and that provides opportunities perhaps to women which did not exist before um and and that does provide a lot of uh, um flexibility you know both to men and women but particularly to women if you if you seek that first flexibility for yourself so these are the three things that i think will open up a lot of uh, opportunities for women and men and and in, like i said whoever learns fastest will will the the future is for them thank you so much i would love to share very quickly with you in the audience just yesterday we started a program called dimaya which means sanskrit in which means opportunity in sanskrit and it's basically an accelerator of 21st century skills for women who want to build or girls rather who want to build careers in tech so we will go to engineering colleges across the country identify hungry ambitious girls who want to lead the world of tech so while the college gives them the technical skills we will accelerate their soft skills uh and, and and just place them in this is a not for profit initiative that we started that's fantastic i'm so happy to uh, hear that and all the best and, and you know why the people came, take this up and the thought came actually because of uh, you in a sense that when we were curating and this is something that's not good i'm about to say when we were curating the set of speakers for this panel not many women in tech and on the top and you know we said why can't there be four sujatas in the next 5 years Exactly. and and we find that who who kind of led your path and and become as accomplished as you so we look forward to having you mentor some of these girls and i'll be in touch with you about that absolutely happy to do that and more power to you on that thank you so much uh thank you everyone for joining today's session and we will be in touch with you here's to having a very bright future and here's to being human again in the age of technology thank you very much thank you